What is up guys, my name is Scourge and you're watching Anyone Can Trap, the YouTube and Patreon series designed for absolute beginners and above in FL Studio who want to learn how to make electronic music. The goal of this series is for you to complete an entire trap song from start to finish while learning FL Studio along the way. And remember, if you want access to all of the presets and samples I use in this or any future tutorial, as well as early access to every single episode, all you gotta do is head over to my Patreon right here or click the link in the description and for only $2 a month, you can get all of these items and much, much more. Alright, so without further ado, let's get into the next episode. So we're going to start by going over what we'll be learning in this episode. We're going to be learning the basic layout of FL Studio and how to navigate it, which includes the channel rack, the playlist, the browser, and the mixer. We'll briefly go over beats, bars, and time signatures. Then we'll talk about samples, VSTs, and the basic intro structure and how to start our song. Uh, and speaking of our song, let's actually take a look at what we'll be making. Now, keep in mind that this is not the absolute final product. I'm still working on it as I'm recording these episodes. I still need an outro and a second drop. Um, so some things may change and I need to mix and master it, but I wanted to show you guys what we'll be working on and hopefully see if it's worth it to stick around. You know. So here we go. So as you can tell, there's a bit of a softer trap vibe in the beginning, like Tonight or Hoochie. And uh, as we make our way up to the build up and drop, it becomes more of like a hard trap style, like you might hear from Say My Name or Riot 10. And I did this because trap music has kind of expanded in just the past year, even the definition of it. So I wanted to kind of incorporate at least two of the most popular right now. Um, and before I get into the basic layout and the interface, I'd like to give a chance for any intermediate producers or people who are already pretty comfortable with the layout of FL to click right here and this will take you to the second part of the video. This one is probably going to be pretty long so I'm probably going to have to separate it into two episodes, well two parts of one episode. So just click here and they'll take you to the next part of this episode which will be starting our song and getting our structure down. Alright, so if you're stuck around let's get into actually learning some stuffs. Uh, we'll start with the channel rack here and here we create our patterns, our leads, our bass lines, etc. Everything we want to put into our songs. Each button over here is a different sample or synth or VST or plugin, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And they're controlled by these notches here or these steps. Um, and I'll get into all that in a second. So let's start from left to right. Over here is the mute and solo button. So if this is lit up, it means this is active. So if we have something here and we play, we can hear it, you know? And we can hear this playing in our channel rack if we have this li uh, light is lit up. The kind of recycle logo. If that's selected onto pattern mode, it'll just play our channel rack. And if it's selected here, it'll play our entire song in the playlist. So making sure that's selected, if that's lit up, we can hear our kick. And if it is muted, we cannot. Uh, you can also right click and solo it, which mutes everything else. So for example, if we have like a kick and a snare right here, and we just keep that playing, but now we solo the kick, the snare no longer comes through. And that can work vice versa. So we can mute this, now we just hear the snare. So that's just a basic concept of kind of muting and soloing. To the right of that is the pan position for the sound. 
This is whether it's coming through the left or right speaker or anywhere in between. So right here it's at 50%, so we know it's coming through both speakers equally. If it's all the way to the left at zero, um, or in this case 100% left, it'll only be through the left speaker. If it's all the way to the right, 100%, then it's just through the right speaker and everything in between. So, and if you right click on any of these knobs, there will always be a selection to reset. So you can just reset this here. We come over here and this is our volume knob. Now it's just what it sounds like. It controls the volume of each of the tracks here. So if I have this kick playing, didn't make sure that was lit. If we have that kick playing, you know, I turn this down. It's quieter, it's louder. And same thing with this knob. If you want it to go back to the initialized point, which is 80%, you can just right click on it and reset. Now the number is tied to our mixer. That is which insert it is inside of, which track in our mixer it's being linked to. Um, I'll talk about this more when we go into our mixer. Um, just for now, when FL Studio first opens, it always opens with a kick, clap, hat, and snare combo. Your basic drum pattern start. And they automatically link them to the mixer. I think this is a nice little way of teaching people who just opened FL Studio what's going on. So each of those numbers are connected in the mixer here to the inserts. So these little notches here are our steps, like I was talking about before, and these help create our sequence. You may also hear the channel rack call it a step sequencer, uh, for obvious reasons, because we'll literally be making a sequence out of our steps. So if I create a little drum pattern here, I'll start to incorporate the playlist and show you how that works. So if I just make a little simple drum pattern here, by, uh, actually, I'll show you, I could put in the kicks here and my snare here, and I can, if I right click on hi-hats, or any of these samples as a matter of fact, you'll notice there's a fill each two steps, fill each four steps, and fill each eight steps options right here. And what this will do is this will fill it every other two steps, which is what I was about to do anyway, but this is a much easier, quicker way to do it. So, uh, but for now, uh, we'll just kind of click them all in if you want to follow along. This way you can see how these work. Okay, so if this is lit up and I play this, we now have kind of like a dubstep style beat. You know, and I'm gonna open our playlist by clicking this button up here in our menu. Oh, it's minimized, so if it's ever minimized like this, you can either click here to restore it or double click on the bar, and that will do the same thing. So here's our playlist. This is where our song takes place. And if we make sure that our first pattern is selected, which is where we made our drum pattern up here, we can, oop, I had my magnifying glass selected, sorry about that. We can paste our first loop right into the playlist. Now, the playlist is basically where we're gonna be stacking, linking, and layering all of our different samples and loops and whatnot. And so you'll notice that this playlist and the channel rack are linked. And by that, I mean you can see where the vertical lines come down. That's our steps. And so every color change is one of these thicker lines here. The, uh, not the thickest here under the two, but the thicker of the four right here. This is each a beat, that's one beat. And these four beats make up one bar. So that's this entire bar, it's four beats. FL Studio opens in a 4-4 time signature, which is standard for music, and that's really all we'll be worrying about in this series, because 3 fourths and other time signatures can get a little confusing in FL. It is possible, but we don't really have to worry about it. A lot of FL, or I'm sorry, a lot of electronic music in general is 4-4, and that's all we'll be using in this series, so we won't talk about it much past that. But that's the basic concepts of beat and bars, and... Um, Basically, we're just stringing together these bars to create a song. If you've ever heard like an 8-bar build-up or a 16-bar build-up, you've heard that phrase before. That's what that means, is that, you know, these 8 bars now are an entire build-up. So I'll quickly go over all of the buttons up here and what they do. This is our basic draw button. So we can click and then drag whatever we draw down, or we can draw multiple items. You'll never be able to draw on top of something on the same layer. It'll always have to be to the right. And also, you'll notice the Snap to Grid is on. This is good when you're starting out because there's a lot of um, inconsistencies that can happen if you don't have it that may make your song sound a little weird or off-tempo. So make sure that this is on, and right now it's on a one-fourth beat. That means that it's going to snap to one-fourth of each of these beats. Starting to make sense? Um, so we come over to the 
paint tool. Now this is the same idea as the draw tool, but now we can hold it down and we can paint on the same track all the way down. So instead of having to constantly click, 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 we can just hold down and drag. So that's convenient for layering out loops and stuff like that. This is our delete button, which is obvious. So if I just paint out our first layer there, come over here, click, deletes it. This is our mute button, yet again. Come over here, click it, it mutes it. So now if we play it in our track, this is not lit up anymore, so now it's playing through our entire playlist, not just the track. If we play it, you're not gonna hear it. We've muted it. Let's unmute that. Now this is our slip. This one just moves the inside of your pattern. It's not moving where it takes place in the playlist, but rather where it is inside. So if I move it left here, now our last kick is over here now, instead of over here. You know, hope that makes sense. And here is our slice tool. This is pretty basic. Uh, this is also snap to the grid. So if we try to slice, it'll always go to the closest line that we're, so if I go here, it'll go to the next closest line to that. Um, I believe though, if you want to uh, slice anywhere you want, it's alt and then click no. Yes, alt and click and then you can, let me zoom in a little bit there, and you can do whatever you want. Uh, also, if you want to know how I just undid that with my keyboard, it is Control alt z and that will undo your last um, change. Now this is your select tool. Simply just select things so we can drag it over here on each of these, or we can drag it up here, which will select an entire portion of the song. That's good if you need to like move something. Like sometimes your, your drop will end up being a little later in the song, you know, so you have to move it and you don't want to have to select them all individually, so that's really convenient. This is our zoom tool, which is, oh, let me deselect that. This is our zoom tool, which again, is pretty basic. We just left click and drag to zoom in. You can right click to zoom out. Actually, I guess you can't. Um, I'm not sure exactly how you zoom out. The only way I really know to zoom out, I guess, is to use these bars to drag left, uh, make them bigger and then you can use this part right here to make your tracks smaller and larger. Um, so we're not really going to worry about any of the notes or patterns or anything right here. Make sure it's set on pattern. Um, make sure stretch is not on or Z crossing. That's very important. Um, and it's on slide, no problem. So that's all we're really going to worry about right now in the playlist. I'm going to come over here to the browser now. Now when you first open the browser, it'll either look like this, or the packs will be open. And you will not have as many of the packs that I have here, but um, this is just because of how many I built up over time. But it does come with some packs, like I believe Legacy is a pretty good one for, um, for like drum patterns and stuff, like right off the bat. It uh, comes with the program. Sorry. Brain died a little bit for a second there. <laughs> But uh, the only packs, or the only pack I should say that I'll be using is this one I created here, the Anyone Can Trap Volume 1. I'll keep adding to this as we continue the series. This is all we'll be using in this first episode, in the next episode um, I'll be using a little bit more. But uh, just remember if you want access to any or all of these samples, all you have to do is head over to my Patreon and donate at least $2 a month. All these presets and samples are yours. Okay, so to take in a sample from the browser, you simply just click and drag it into the playlist. Now, I would like to point out that some people prefer producing this way. Um, so for example, like I showed you, the channel rack and the playlist are synced up with the colors and all that. So you can essentially put your kick there, your snare here, kick here again, you know, and then your snare here again or whatever and then you know and then you have like a kick snare pattern but I don't like doing it like this I prefer using the sequencer I understand why people want to do this you have a lot more freedom with your samples and what you can do with them and your sound so you know if I want this one to be shorter than this one you know I can easily just come in and do that that's not as easy in the sequencer and I get that but I prefer that because it makes it a lot cleaner so I'm mainly going to be using the sequencer and how to bring samples into that um, Oh, you'll notice sometimes that may happen. Uh, let me go back to that. So in your top list in the channel rack, you'll come in here and you'll think like, oh, where did my entire sequence go? You know, I just had it. 
Well, it's because it switched what the folder is looking at in your channel rack. Up here, it'll show it's now showing only your audio sources, which are those kick and snares that I dragged into the playlist. We want the unsorted sources, which is when uh, you first load it up, it'll be unsorted, or when you add one a sample, it'll usually be under the unsorted category. Um, I never really sort them. I don't even necessarily know how to sort them, really, but it's not important. Um, okay. So to drag in the samples here, all we have to do is click and drag directly over our kick. Now the name won't change because they're the same, but the sample itself did change. Same with our snare, we can bring that over here. Um, and we can even bring our woodblock clap into the clap section. Um, I don't have a hat, I just realized I have to get a hat, a hi-hat. I'll add to the pack um, when you download it. Um, I will be giving the kick for free this video. It'll be in a link in the description. Um, but that's just a little taste because I don't want to give everything away. I want, you know, the people who go on to Patreon to get a little something special. You know what I mean? So, like this snare, I really love this snare. Um, so I can't just be going giving that away. You know what I'm saying? Who am I? Who am I? Oprah! <laughs> so now I would like to point out, if you drag a sample in and it's over nothing inside of the channel rack, it'll create a new sample. If you drag it over something like I did before, it will replace it. So if you want to add a new sample or anything like that, make sure you're always doing it outside of the previous ones. Um, also within the channel rack, I actually didn't explain this, I'm sorry. You can add, um, add a new channel. Oh. Oh. Well, that's what I was about to show you. But what I usually do is I right click on these buttons and I press insert. And then that will insert a channel or a track right above your previous one that you're clicking on. So if I wanted to add like a citrus, which is what we'll be using in this series, because it comes with FL Studio. Boom. We can load that VST by inserting or plus button down here and you can add a synth that way as well. And I believe that'll probably put it at the bottom instead of above whatever one you're using. Yeah. So I like using the insert because it can help it keep a little cleaner, like I can keep all my synths together and all of my drums together. Um, okay. So I believe that's all we really have to worry about in the browser. Now let's go on to our mixer. So our mixer is essentially where all of our sounds are coming through and we can edit them separately in each insert. So it's similar to those uh, physical mixers you may have seen before. Um, I'll post a picture. Uh, you've probably seen those and thought they were really intimidating, but really they, most of those knobs do the same exact thing. It's just controlling a different insert of sound. So for example, kick is only playing through this first insert. So if I was to press play inside of my channel here, and I just play this, you'll notice you can see each of these sounds as they pop up. And this is really great because, you know, you can see as it's peaking, like the little yellow, it's red, it's starting to get a little too loud, it's peaking in those ports, so we can fix that. So I'll quickly go over what happens in this mixer. So if we're in our insert one, we can now add effects to just our kick. It won't affect any of the other sounds or samples or synths in our project, except for just our kick. So if we were to come into slot one, click here, it'll open up all of our selections for our different uh, effects and synths and what, or not synths, but effects and what, non VSTs. And we can click our reverb, reverb two, and now just the kick has reverb. If we were to have done that in the master track, where everything is routed through, everything would have gotten reverbed. But just because we did it in the insert one, only the kick is. So if we wanted to add reverb to the snare too, we'd also have to come in here, you know, add a reverb, blah, blah, blah. So let's delete that for now. Actually, before I delete it, I'll show you the, you may have noticed the green buttons again. They work exactly the same way they did before. If it's off, you mute it. If it's on, it's unmuted. If uh, also this is your volume control, so not necessarily a volume control, but a dirty wet control, which means how much reverb is actually coming through the kick. So if I solo the kick right here and I play this, you can tell it's not as much reverb. And as I build this up, it's even more and more and more. So that's nice if you want to add like a rise in your buildup where there's like a lot of reverb going on, a lot of atmosphere, you can create an automation clip which will slowly rise that. And if you don't know what automation clips are, I won't go into it too in depth right now, but essentially they just control all of these knobs. Almost every single thing in this program can be controlled with an automation clip. And it creates 
really cool effects and a lot of sounds that wouldn't be possible without it and a lot of uh, flow and change in your music. So I'm going to delete this now and by deleting it I just click here, select, and then none and that will replace your reverb with nothing. Turn that back all the way up. So again, your lights here, if it's off you will not hear anything through that insert. So for example, if I uh, unsolo everything, play it, our kick is muted in the mixer, but it is not muted in the channel rack. Now the mixer is kind of like, I'm trying to figure out a way to put this. It, basically anything the mixer does overpowers what happened in the channel rack. It's still active, but now the mixer is more important. So if we mute the mixer, even though our kick is not muted in the channel rack, we now can't hear it, basically. I don't know why that was so hard for me to explain. <laughs> um, so we come down here. This is essentially just our volume in our mixer for each track. We won't worry about these right now. These have to do with like polarities and switching channels. We're not going to have to worry about that in this series. Um, same with the stereo separation. Don't worry about that. Um, but down here, if we do have an, uh, an effect, like a limiter, I'll just throw something in there, you'll notice our little light bulb comes on right here. This means that effects are active in this insert. So if we click this off, now this is inactive and will not work. So this is nice if you just kind of want to go back to your bass sound, listen to it real quick, or we can even add, add an automation clip to this to disable all of our effects at once instead of having to make an individual you know, automation clip for each of these slots to the right here. I said slots, you PC, Jesus. So that's really all I'm going to talk about now with the mixer. Oh, I guess I'll talk about these wires looking things down here. These basically just connect our inserts. These, um, so now if I connect these, these are now running through both one, three, and four. So any of the effects inside of these inserts will also affect insert one. Um, we won't get too into that because that's really more for more advanced techniques like vocoding and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, voice is in one insert, then your synth is in another, and then they're both routed to the same insert, and then you hear the robot voice coming through, which is really cool. So that's that's just the basics of what vocoding is. I'm not going to go into how to do it this episode, of course. But, um, so yeah, that's pretty much all we have to know about our mixer right now. Sorry about that. Camera decided to uh, just stop recording on me. But uh, all I was saying is that's pretty much all we need to know in our mixer. For right now. I don't have to teach you about the equalizing in this one because I, if I'm going to equalize it, it's going to be in a slot here in the parametric EQ is what I usually use. There are other VSTs and outside sources you can use, but in this series I'm going to be using everything within FL Studio, mostly. That way it keeps it more centralized, it's a lot easier to follow, and we're still learning about FL Studio and we're not worrying about other programs like Massive and Serum and all those plugins right now. Uh, it's ironic that my camera decided to stop recording like 30 seconds ago because this is the end of this portion of the video. Um, so I'm definitely going to have to separate these into two parts. It's still one episode. They'll be released the same day. So click here. This will take you to the next part of this episode and where we'll uh, start actually working on our song. So I'm really excited. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know this one was kind of long and thanks for sticking it out with me. And I'm really excited for the future of the series. If you have any suggestions for things you might want to learn or things I may have kind of scanned over, just let me know in the comments. You know, setting all this up, it's kind of hard to remind myself the very basics of FL Studio and what I may kind of just scan over and not realize is a more in-depth idea or you know process so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in the next video this has been anyone can trap be sure to check out my patreon if you want any or all the samples used in this video as well as early access to the next video before it comes out all right thanks for watching guys peace